zoax.net. Lesson 3, Primitive Data Types. For this lesson, you will need a project like the one we created in Lesson 1. In this lesson, we explain a little about the primitive data types in Java. Primitive data types are like the chemical elements. They are building blocks from which we build up larger data types, much like molecules. We will create larger data types as we go on in later lessons, so it is important to get a firm grasp on the primitive data types first. We have a table of the primitive data types on our website at zoax.net. There are four basic data types in Java. These are integers, floating point numbers, characters, and booleans. The integer types are just what you would imagine. They are numbers with no fractional part. Our second type is floating point numbers. These numbers are more general than integers since they can have fractional parts. The third data type is characters. This type refers to data elements that can be virtually any known symbol. For instance, each letter of the alphabet is a character. Likewise, every digit is a character too. The set of characters is very large and includes arithmetic symbols, almost all alphabets, and even music symbols. Finally, the Boolean data type is the simplest. It only takes on the logical values true and false. In Java, there are eight types of primitives with the following names. Byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, and boolean. The first four types, byte, short, int, and long, are used to store integers. The only difference between the integer types are the memory that they use and the range of values that they can represent. The next two types, float and double, are used to store floating point numbers. Again, the only difference between the float and double is the memory used and the range of values that they can represent. We will typically only use doubles. The only character type that we have is the shortened name char, and the only boolean type is simply called boolean. That accounts for all of the primitive data types. For illustration, I have written a simple program. Again, I created a project just like the one in Lesson 1 and added this code to it. These first four lines assign values of each type, and these eight lines output those values. Here we have one value of each type, an integer, a folding point number, a character, and a boolean. In each of these lines, we first write the type, then we write the name that we give the data type. Finally, we assign it an appropriate literal value followed by a semicolon. For the output, we first use print and a string literal. Then we use a print line and the name of the data type. As we will see, the first print statement just prints what is inside the quotation marks because it uses a string literal, while the print line statement outputs the value of the data. So if we compile and run this program, we see this in the output pane. This code is a little cumbersome since we use two lines of code to output one line of text. However, we can remedy this by putting the string literals and the values together with a plus sign in one print line statement like this. We will explain more about this use of the plus sign as we go on. For now, just know that we can use it to string together output. Executing this program, we see the exact same output as we had before. 